Hi guys, Julia here from JM Squared Vintage. Welcome back to the channel. Happy Monday. How was your weekend? Did you have a good time? Did anybody else get out to the bins this weekend? Did you find anything good? Let me know in the comments below. I am here today with a haul. I went to my favorite bins location that's $1 a piece. And I think I have 32 pieces, so it's not a huge haul today. I am a little bit behind in listing and kind of organizing my stuff here, so I wanted to go a little bit light. But I, as I was checking these into my inventory spreadsheet, I remember thinking to myself like, oh, these are some really good pieces. So there, I like to call this a small but mighty haul. But before we get started here, if you are new, welcome. I am Julia, that is my name. We talk all things thrifting and vintage and reselling on the internet here. If that sounds like something that you are into, be sure to hit subscribe down below. I would love to have you along on this journey. But without further ado, guys, I am losing daylight, believe it or not. I usually film in the morning. I am losing daylight right now. And I've got lots of stuff to show you. So go grab yourself a snack, go grab yourself a drink. You know I've got my matcha latte. <laughs> Sit back, relax, and let's get in. So we're gonna start off here with one of the two non-clothing pieces. I think that the other non-clothing pieces at the bottom of this bag, they're, otherwise I would have them out together. But also, fun secret about me, I've literally never owned a pair of Uggs. I've never been in possession of a pair of Uggs. I've never sold a pair of Uggs, but I grabbed these from the bins. All the trend reports that I'm seeing have like taller Uggs coming back, uh, kind of after the micro minis of the last couple years. But these I think are size, six? Where did I see that? They're size women's five, which is interesting. I think that this can be like in between a kid size and an adult size, but they're in pretty good condition. I think they need a little bit of like a brush up, but let me know. Do Uggs do well for you? How much do you sell them for? Like, what do you, what do you think I should list these for? Chances are these will not be listed by the time this video goes up, so help a sister out. Let me know what you usually do on your Uggs. Again, I've never sold a pair, I've never owned a pair. I've gotta say though, I am a natural fiber nerd and the fact that this is real Sherpa on the inside is like everything to me. Anybody who comes at me with that fake Sherpa stuff and calls it Sherpa, get out, get out. I mean, it just, my feet sweat thinking about it. So I love real Sherpa. No clue what I'll get for it. Again, let me know. Let me know what you think I should charge for these down below. Next up, now this is something I grabbed and it's a brand that I know, it's a brand that I really like, but when I got it home and I was inspecting it, there are some stains on it, so I don't know if I'll be able to sell this, but this is from 47. And 47 is for the most part like a sportswear company. They do really great, like all of my hats, all of my favorite hats that I wear are 47s. But this is a Brooklyn Dodgers shirt. It's white, it's, they're kind of known for doing these like real kind of classic, almost minimal designs. It's not like your fanatics type wear. 47 just has a very distinct look. This, if I'm able to sell it, if I'm able to get it clean, uh, probably somewhere in the 30 to $40 range. 47 does sell for a pretty decent clip when, when you do find it. I very rarely find that in the bins though, very rarely, or in the thrift. Next up, I grabbed this from Zara. This is a newer tag Zara situation. It is an extra small, but it's a pretty oversized fit. So it's this kind of shirt dress with a drawstring waist, wide sleeves. Now this color blue, Blues in general, but this color blue, I've seen on so many fall of 24 trend reports. It, there's this kind of emerging core trend that we're gonna be seeing called like cyber core. And it's all very kind of futuristic dressing, but this color is really kind of at the core of it. So if you have things that are in this kind of like electric blue, or they have a little bit of a futuristic like trend to it, be sure you're using the tag cyber core because that's gonna be popping up probably within the next couple months and you wanna be ahead of that trend. Anyway, so I found this cute little drawstring dress or tunic, uh, nice big pockets, I'll probably 25 to $35 on this. Zara has been selling really well and anything I have in this color has been moving pretty well. So just a little tip on your keywording. Again, remember to like really keep up on those keywords cause that's how you get yourself to the front of the line. Next up, this is a great basic from Everlane. <clears throat> I will pick up pretty much anything that I see from Everlane in great condition. This of course needs a bath and a steam, but this is just a really basic sleeveless button down white poplin blouse. Everlane is, uh, you know, they're known for making really high quality, like designer level quality basics. 
but without the middleman, without the crazy designer markup. So everything I've ever had from Everlane sells pretty quickly. I think the thing that took the longest was a blazer that I just sold last week. And I think that was listed for about two months. So definitely keep your eyes out for Everlane. People really seek it out. And again, this is just a great little basic size small. So probably, I mean, this is a, a less significant piece. So probably somewhere 20 to $26. Next up, now I don't pick up a ton of skinny jeans, even though you'll hear from some people that they're coming back. I don't think that true skinny jeans are coming back. I think we're gonna see the slimming of this wide leg, but not quite to like a tapered skinny jean. I think we're gonna be seeing slimmer boot cuts, like kick flares, stuff like that. But these are rag and bone. And I will pick up pretty much any rag and bone jeans. These sell for like $250. They're pretty expensive. And I believe, I'm not quite sure if these are men's or women, but this is a skinny leg. The, the fit is called the Fit One Skinny Leg. I'll have to do a little bit more research onto these in particular, but I have had rag and bone jeans go for like 80 to $100. I don't think I'll get 80 to $100 just because these are skinny, but still probably 35 to 45 on these. They're in great condition. And people like really love Rag and Bone. Rag and Bone is one of those jean companies that has like an allegiance. You know, like if it fits you, it fits you. Oh, and these do have like a raw hem, which I do love. Great find and for sure keep your eyes out for those jeans. I very rarely find them in the thrift, in the bins, anywhere. They're kind of like on the same level as like mother jeans, at least to me. So this is like, a lesson learned moment. So I grabbed this blazer and I usually don't grab blazers, but it does have something about it that we should talk about just so you don't end up spending money on something that you shouldn't. So this is like a men's suit jacket and it is very nice. And I still very well might sell this. This is from, and this is Joseph Abood for Nordstrom. So this was probably a suit jacket in like the five to $800 range. I think that's about where Joseph Abood sits in the Nordstrom. Now Joseph Abood makes suits in a million different levels. Like they make, you know, rental tuxedos, they make tuxedos to be sold at like men's, or like suits to be sold at men's warehouse. They make like the Nordstrom stuff, which is some of their higher end stuff. And then they have like a super high, super high end, like almost bespoke level tailoring. But the reason I grabbed this was the label on the other side. <laughs> and my eyes almost popped out of my head because I saw this label first. And that says Loro Piana, Woolen Mills. Now, Laura Piana, if you've heard the term quiet luxury, which I'm sure you have, you're all kind of in the same business as me. Laura Piana is like the pinnacle of quiet luxury. They, it was all over succession. I think that's really where people started to be like obsessed with this. But they are just a super ultra high end brand that doesn't use any kind of like external labeling. You know, they're known for these like very simple wool ball caps and these kind of like driving mocks. But their suiting, I mean, if this was a Loro Piano suit, blazer, this would be six to $10,000. I'm like estimating here, but I'm pretty sure that I'm in like that right range. It's incredibly expensive. But when I got home, I mean, like I, I got it for a dollar, so I was gonna grab it, you know, like if nothing else, this is a learning experience for me and for all of you. Again, I still might sell it because it is really beautiful. Like this is merino wool on the outside. Like it, it feels high quality. But Loro Piano also makes like their woolen mills makes wool in a range of qualities. So they obviously make the ultra high end for like the Loro Piano suits. And they also make more consumer grade for other companies. So they provide their wool, you know, it's not just to their own label. So this is a perfect example of Loro Piano making wool and selling it to Joseph Abood. Again, it feels very nice. This feels like ultra fine merino. The lining I don't think is silk. It actually, it might be silk. Either way, I'm gonna do a little bit more research into this, but I thought we'd talk about it just so, you know, my lesson learned is your lesson learned. So again, if you are outsourcing and you are sourcing at a higher dollar amount, I maybe wouldn't commit $15, $20 to a blazer like this, unless we really know what we're talking about. So if you see that label, be sure to comp it, do a little bit more research. I'm gonna do a little bit more research on this, but either or, keep your eye out for that label, no matter what, keep your eye out for that label. If you find a sweater with that label on it, jump on it, you want it, you want it, because they resell for hundreds of dollars. Next up, now this is something I grabbed, and I just sold something like this recently. I love a linen sweater. 
like the drape of a linen sweater just makes me really happy. This is just a little like open weave long line sweater and this is from Banana Republic Heritage which I am not familiar with this line at all. This could be vintage, this could be current, I don't know. But either way, this is a long line. It is an extra small. It's a long line short sleeve cardigan in this nice like linen open weave. Let me see if you can get close on that texture. It is really pretty. I, maybe 20 bucks on this. This is just something I wasn't gonna leave behind because I'm just a sucker for a linen sweater. What could I say? And it is, you know, it is long line. I could see this being like a swim cover up for somebody. Like it's kind of got that vibe that can go from like street wear to resort wear. It's really nice. This kind of like gray brown taupey color. Next up here. Now I feel like I have been finding a lot of this designer recently. This is Laundry by Shelley Seagal. And there's no tag in it. Like I couldn't find any tag in the back at all, but the little hang tags there you go but this is all silk like the lining is silk i can feel that and the outside is silk chiffon and this is kind of like a raw edge hem this is just a very simple asymmetrical halter top dress and it is beautiful it's in beautiful condition this doesn't look like it's ever been worn there again there's no tag in here so i'm gonna have to guesstimate the size i'm gonna I think this is probably about a size eight. It's just really pretty, really simple little black dress. Oh, I'm sorry, that's a high-low hem, which I love. It just looks so delicate with these raw edges. It's really beautiful. I'm glad that I saw the tag. I mean, Laundry by Shelley Seagal is sold at like Saks Fifth Avenue. I think it's sold at Neiman Marcus. It's not a cheap brand, so this was probably a good at least four or $500 dress. And again, the materials are fine. It's all silk, so yes, please. Next up, now I rarely find stuff like this in good condition. If you've ever been to the bins, you know that a lot of like pleather pieces, because they sit in a truck or they sit kind of out exposed to the elements, a lot of them get like heated up, then cooled down, then heated up, then cooled down, and they start to disintegrate. But this was in like perfect condition. And this is from Blank NYC, which I think you see at Nordstrom. But it's just this little olive green lightweight jacket. I've been selling a lot of these kind of jackets recently. This has like a jersey shawl collar with a moto style zip. It's really cute. And it's in great condition. Again, it's a size small. I'll probably see like $25 to $35 on this. I was just really excited to see a pleather piece, like a vegan leather piece, in great condition. Because it is so, so rare, at least at my locations out here. Like, I don't know if it's the same wherever you are in the country, but here, any kind of pleather is usually like flaking off and literally disintegrating all over everything else in the bins. So next up, now this is a brand I don't pick up all that often, but it is a style I pick up very often. This is just a cute pair of black kind of distressed overalls. I will pick these up in from almost any brand. Overalls just sell really well for me. They're just kind of a forever piece. You know, they're always in style in one iteration or another. And these were in great condition. Again, I'm paying a dollar for them. So, you know, my investment is pretty low. I'll probably see for Love Tree and Love Tree is interesting because the quality is really nice on Love Tree, but the sell through, like the, the resale price isn't that great. So if I'm picking something up, it's going to be something a little bit more substantial like overalls. I'll probably see 25 to $35 on these. And I would have no doubt that these will go very quickly. Overalls just fly out of my closet. Next up, this is a brand I love to find ultra high end. That is Rebecca Taylor. Hopefully that's showing up. This is kind of like a gray on white label. This is just a black, lightweight cotton boho top. The details on this are just incredible. Like there's pin tucking details on the sleeve. Can you see that? With like little accent stitches with a mesh end with a raw hem. Really beautiful. And look at this beading up on the, uh, up on the collar line. Isn't that beautiful? And those sequins look like, I'm pretty sure that those sequins are actually like mother of pearl. They have a little bit of like contour to them that makes them look natural. So this was just a great find. Size six in perfect condition, beautiful and delicate as Rebecca Taylor stuff usually is. That's kind of her MO, but I'm always, always, always excited to find a Rebecca Taylor piece in the bins. Just beautiful. This was probably close to $300 new. 
very expensive brand. So this was a skirt that I picked up and I couldn't really find, just in my quick search, where these are usually bought. This is a gray silk bias cut maxi skirt and with a drawstring top and I have this kind of cinched pretty tight. But the brand is called Polecci. And just my quick search, I couldn't find really where this was sold. But anytime I find something bias cut, I'm in. This is, if you're not familiar with what bias cut is, basically being cut on the bias means that the fabric is cut instead of you have, what's it called, the weft and the warp. That's the, that's the kind of threads that you have in a fabric and usually they go, you know, up and down, left and right. But when you have something cut on the bias, it's diagonal. So what happens is when you have curves, this is where something being cut on the bias is so friendly. It's something that can like hug your curves and really like form to your curves without pulling. So if you are dealing with a straight cut fabric where the weft and the warp are like perpendicular, straight up and down, and you have say hips, you pull, let's see if I can even show an example with this. So like, okay, now we're holding it straight up and down. If you pull, feel how that kind of snaps? Like it's rigid. It's not going to like contour to you. But if you have hips and you're dealing with a bias cut fabric, see how that gives a little bit? So it really hugs your curves. It's how you can get that kind of slinky look, no matter how curvy you are, without pulling over the widest part of yourself. So when you see something that's bias cut, like if you're shopping for yourself and you're somebody that has like an ample bust or ample hips, bias cut is your friend. Bias cut is what can make something that you wouldn't think be, would be able to fit you, it can make it fit you just by the way that the fabric is cut. And it does take skill to do that. Like it's not, it's not the easiest way to work with silk because it does have that give. Uh, so typically when you're seeing something cut on the bias, it's going to be a higher quality piece. Anyway, so this is a bias cut silk maxi skirt from Pelecci. I need to do a little bit more research on this brand, but because of the nature of what it is and how it's cut and all of that, I'll probably see maybe 35 to $40 on this. It is beautiful and in beautiful condition. It needs a little bit of a steam, but this is going to clean up very, very nicely. Next up, now I had to pick this up because I love this color combination so much in pretty much any iteration that it's in. And that is a good pink and green, especially when you're giving me like a cabana stripe moment. This is what's called cabana stripe. I, I just love it. This reminds me of like the Beverly Hills Hotel with those green striped awnings. Uh, but this is from Urban Outfitters. This is a men's shirt and it is kind of a satin a little bit of a heavier weight satin. So I'm not quite sure what I'll get for this. You know, maybe somewhere 25 to $30, but I just think it's so cute. And like right now, spring, summer, this is such like a cocktails by the pool kind of shirt. I don't think that this will sit around for long at all. Um, I don't often pick up Urban Outfitters, but this is a perfect example of something that I will throw all rules away for. Moving right along here. So this is a pair of pants from Current Elliott. Now Current Elliott, who are the design team also behind The Great, which is a brand I love finding. I found a few pieces and they've sold really, really fast for really great prices. Current Elliott is mostly known for their jeans. I don't think that their jeans are selling for as much as they used to, but these are like khakis. They look like they're kind of cropped khakis. They're a size 28. And I just like the kind of utility vibe of these. The details here are denim. So like that's a denim pocket lining. The, the belt loops are also denim. But this is the label you're looking for. I mean, the jury's out on whether or not I would recommend paying up for these. I haven't found a pair of like regular current Elliott anything in a while. So I'll try to report back when these do sell and kind of make my recommendations there. At the moment, I probably wouldn't say to go and pay up for these if you're finding them for like $10, $15 at the, at the thrift store. But uh, like I said, I will report back on how long these take and you know how much they sell for. So I'm gonna guess, because these are a slimmer leg, I'm gonna guess probably 25 to $35. So if you see something tomorrow, you know, take that number into consideration. But like I said, if you're sourcing for a dollar or two dollars of the bins, no big deal. You know, it's probably gonna be a safe bet, but I would not pay up at the moment. Next up here, this is a cute little pair of Free People Movement like jersey shorts. 
these things tend to sell so quickly for me, especially right now. I mean, first of all, I want to live in shorts like this. These are kind of like a, a slightly heavier weight jersey with a little like rib knit detail there. Elasticated waist, with size medium. I mean, as soft as soft could be. They have the little logo down there in the on the leg. These sell for like $46 to $50. I think that's around where they sell. I will probably get a good $20 on these. And I would imagine that these will sell very quickly. These feel brand new. These feel like these maybe have not been really worn ever. Next up, now this is a Brandy Melville piece. I don't pick up, I leave a ton of Brandy Melville at the bins. I don't pick up much, but I do pick up their sweaters and I do pick up some of their dresses. It's kind of a problematic thing with their one size whole fitting model, but they're, they're coming back. Like they're kind of really hot right now. I'm starting to see a lot of it pop up on trend reports, but even more so than Brandy Melville, is prep. This is going to be the summer of prep. And in terms of like, it's not going to be prep as we knew it back in the early 2000s or like they did it in the 80s. Prep in this iteration is more about like pop colors. So this is going to be a little bit on the soft side, but it's still, there's still people that really love pastels. So this will go, I think, pretty quickly. But do keep your eyes out for more preppy pieces like rugby shirts. Rugby shirts are going to be huge this year. We're going to be seeing boat shoes coming back, which makes my little rower self so happy that I never got rid of my Sperry Topsiders and I never will because they're the most comfortable shoes ever. Prep is going to be back in a big way this summer. So start again using those tags, start seeking out preppy things, kind of sweaters that can be thrown on over shoulders, like we're going to be seeing this again. I think I'll probably get 25 to $30 on this and I think that this will sell probably within one or two weeks. Next up, now I don't pick up a ton of Talbots and I know that there are a lot of people out there that do so well with Talbots. Like there are a couple of YouTubers that I follow that are like, I never leave the bins without a Talbots piece or two. Like it's just, they love it and they do a great business with it. I historically do not do a great business with it. I have a couple things that have sold quick. I have a lot more that have sat. But I just thought that this sweater was very timely and in fabulous condition. This feels brand new. This is a size large in this like really pretty butter yellow. But look at the knit on this. I just thought this knit was so pretty. And again, I, you know, you don't often see this color. So I grabbed it, you know, this is gonna be something that I think will, you know, it's not black, it's not a neutral. This is definitely a pop color. And if somebody loves Talbots and they're looking for something pop color, this will sell. I think that this will actually sell pretty quickly. I think I'll probably see somewhere between 25 and 35 on it. It is all cotton and again in like new condition. Let me know, do you do well with Talbots? I'm kind of interested to hear, like I, I'm always interested to hear what people do well with because we all do well with different things. But if you do well with Talbots, let me know and like let me know what your best sellers are in Talbots. I'm, I'm just really interested to hear like how you do in your unique business. Now, okay, this was an interesting find. I recognize this shirt. It does have the top hood cut off, but this is actually a Billie Eilish Tour sweatshirt. This was bought at Tour and somebody cut, this was a hoodie, and somebody cut the hood off. I, I don't know. I don't know how well this is gonna do. I'm interested to see because of this modification. It's from the Happier Than Ever Tour. The quality is really nice. This is a French terry, again, if you are not familiar with the term. French terry is when the sweatshirt has this kind of looped back versus like a fleeced back, like versus it feeling fuzzy. This has a little bit of a, a little bit of a rougher feel, but it does soften up beautifully and it drapes much nicer than a fleece, like a, a regular fleece. So I'm interested. I think this is about a size large, extra large. I like, I think if, if I'm kind of estimating this correctly, I'm going to guess that this is what they call a cut and sew piece. So typically when you have something being printed on a sweatshirt, you get what's called a blank. So you'll go and you'll pick out like an American Apparel or like a Gildan or a whatever, Fruit of the Loom, Hanes, jerseys, you'll find a blank. And you can get custom tags put in blanks, but it'll still be a blank made by another company. When you're dealing with higher end sweatshirts, they are what they call a cut and sew piece. But something like this, I'm looking at the shape of this and I'm looking at the width versus the length. This tells me that this is kind of a piece that Billy's team kind of 
custom designed. And so it just, it makes the pieces a little bit more expensive, but it also makes it fit how you want it to fit. Like girls today are looking for sweatshirts that are a little bit wider and a little bit shorter than a typical man's blank sweatshirt. So this tells me that this is cut and sew, which makes it a little bit more valuable. I mean, the, the value in this, of course, is that it's a Billie Eilish tour sweatshirt, but I'm interested to see how this does. And obviously I'm always on the lookout for tour sweatshirts, mostly Billie Eilish and for the love of God, if you can find a Taylor Swift tour sweatshirt in the thrift anywhere, buy it. They're going for like hundreds of dollars. It's kind of crazy, the aftermarket uh, value of those things. But Billie Eilish is another one that sells pretty well. I, I've seen some other ones of this sell in the $80 range. So we'll find out. I'll try to make sure that this gets into like one of my either ship with me videos or into one of my TikToks or shorts that I do here. If you don't already follow me along on my socials, I ha I'll have the handles like right here and I'll also have the links down below, but I'll make sure that when this does sell, I put it in one of those so I can report back on how this does. Cool find though. I love me some Billie Eilish. I love her. Next up here, a great little basic. This is J. Jill. Love finding J. Jill, though that size tag's been cut out, so I'm gonna have to do some measuring. This is just a great little thermal shirt, gray heather, waffle knit. This looks like a three, no, no, that's a full length sleeve. Cute little buttons at the cuff there. This will go, you know, again, this might sit until next winter because it is a thermal knit, but J. Jill's been selling really quick for me. Like pretty much anything J. Jill I'm putting out there is moving pretty quickly, but probably somewhere 20 to $25 on this. This is a, this is a true basic, but the quality as always with J. Jill is beautiful. All right, we're moving along here. Now this is for sure a brand I don't pick up all that often. And this is Loft. And this is in particular Loft Petites. The only reason I grabbed this is because this is a 100% silk dress in red. This needs to be steamed out. I mean, it's so wrinkly, but it is a really cute piece, like this kind of raw edge, ruffle, sleeveless sleeve. It's got an elasticated waist. It's a just above the knee hit. You know, it is loft. It's not gonna sell for too terribly much, but it is all silk. It is beautifully made. I'll probably see 28 to 32 on this. Again, I don't recommend picking up a ton of loft, but this had a lot going for it that I can use to kind of keyword it with. So this will be probably a pretty safe bet. Isn't that pretty? It's funny, like I'm looking at the viewfinder on the camera and this looks very orange on the camera, but it is, this is a beautiful like cherry red in reality. So pretty. It looks more, now it looks more like the color <laughs> that it is. So next up, oh my God, this was such a cool find. So <clears throat> this is a vintage silk overcoat. This is giving me all of like the Pretty in Pink, Ducky Dale, Ska Club vibes. It's about midi length. And I'll try to try this on if I, if I can find a place where I can try this on and show it to you. I'll, I'll put that footage over here. I mean, it's just giving like 80s goth. 80s like Berlin nightclub, 80s punk rock. I'm obsessed. So cute, right? You roll it up. It's a whole vibe. This is a whole vibe. I love it. Inside contrast trim. Ah, I love it. But it's got these big shoulder pads, 100% silk. The, co the designer is Franco Caligari. And it's, you know, again, pure silk. So it's that kind of washable silk. And I gotta say, like, I'm gonna have to hang this thing outside for a while, maybe do a little, like, vinegar bath. Vinegar bath? I can't remember what it is that I use to get cigarette smell out of silk, but it is definitely, like, I can smell some 1984 Benson and Hedges up on this piece, but it is so cool, and I just, I think that this will fly out of my closet. I just, it's a very cool piece, and I can see a million cool people right now wearing this. So I think I'll probably get like 60 bucks on this, maybe a little bit more. Just a super, super cool piece. I love it so much. Next up now, okay, so this, I don't know how well this is gonna sell. This is a New Kids on the Block shirt, but this is by Junk Food. And Junk Food is a pretty expensive brand. They do a lot of like, Disney IP, they'll do some like universal IP, they do a lot of like nerd, you know, like nerd designs. And they sell, like their t-shirts are like 45, 50 bucks. So 
I'm interested to see how this does. I mean, New Kids on the Block forever. You know, obviously I was a New Kids girl. That was the only boy band that I was ever into. Like I never became an NSYNC girl. I was never a Backstreet Boys girl. I was like deep into hip hop <laughs> by the time that came through. It's into hip hop and like Nine Inch Nails and I'm still into hip hop and Nine Inch Nails. Anyway, interested to see how this does, but like New Kids forever is what I'm saying. Next up, now I grabbed this. I don't do a ton of swimsuits, but this just felt really well made to me. This is from a brand called Cleo Bella Turquoise. And when I did the comps, they were pretty expensive, like $100 swimsuits or so. So I'm not quite sure what I'll get for this. Oh my goodness. I'm looking at this on the back and like the lining has a print to it. Can you see that? And I gotta say like, this feels nice and sturdy. That's usually like my kind of test for a swimsuit. Like if it doesn't, you know, if it's really like light and stretchy, it's not going to give the support that a swimsuit needs. But um, yeah, so I'm interested to see how this does. Size large. And I really like that design. I think that's really pretty. That's kind of gold. I don't know if you can tell that that is metallic embroidery there. So pretty. Maybe, I don't know, 25 bucks, 35 bucks on that. Now this is an interesting brand that I've never found while out and about, but I know the brand. And this is Specialized. And Specialized is a bicycle manufacturer, like a high-end bike manufacturer. If you are into like road biking or mountain biking, you probably know who Specialized is. But I grabbed this because, oh, look at that. There's like an um, embroidered logo on that kind of rear of the back hip there. This is just kind of like a nice like nubby fleece. I love like, this feels like a towel on the inside. Size large. Specialized is super expensive. So I'm not quite sure what this will go for on the resale market. Maybe not as high as I think, maybe a little bit higher than I think, but again, I was gonna take a chance on it because I know Specialized and I know Specialized is very expensive. And I know like if you're in a sporting goods store and you are looking at bike clothes or anything like that, that stuff is expensive y'all. Like really expensive for things, you know, like you're looking at little bike shorts and they're yay big and they're $85. Now granted, I get it as somebody who does own several pairs of bike shorts. They are 100% necessary. Dang, they are expensive. Next up, now I grabbed this. I recognize this tag. This is a sub, a sub line of NSF. And NSF is super expensive. You can buy it at Saks. This is just a little like gray tank top. It is like the perfect neckline. It is not too low. It's not too high. And this like kind of slub gray heather is so soft so so soft it's got a raw hem it just feels really high quality you know this was probably 80 bucks to 100 dollars new so i don't know what i'll get on this i've sold a bunch of their kind of sweatshirt pieces in the 50 dollar range so maybe like 25 to 30 on this but i'm never gonna leave behind as, as, as long as i'm sourcing it for a reasonable price i'm never gonna leave behind anything nsf we are getting there guys okay so this was kind of a cool thing that i found i'm not quite sure what this will go for but i have a feeling that this will sell and i think that this is going to be a depop sale this is a little like baby tea and that art on the front, if you are unfamiliar, is the art of Keith Haring. And his story is really fascinating. He is unfortunately no longer with us. He did passive AIDS at a very young age, but he was kind of, he was a graffiti artist at first. So he would go around the New York City subways, like tagging these characters. They're very, very like identifiable. And there are some pieces in the New York subway still in existence, but he opened up this thing called the Pop Shop. And this was very similar to what Andy Warhol did back in like the mid-century era, where his goal was to make art accessible to the public, right? So he had, with the pop shop, I can't remember exactly how many illustrations he had. So he had, I, I want to say it was like 20 different illustrations, and he would release that on like a t-shirt, on a hat, on a whatever. But they all were very much this aesthetic, this style. Now, I don't know if this is one of the pop shop prints there's certainly a lot more out there today like go if you don't know anything about Keith Haring like go and do some research and, and learn about his remarkable life. He did a lot of work with ACT UP back in the 80s to like build recognition of AIDS and what was going on in that community so um, he did some really really powerful things with this artwork. Anyway this I don't know where this was from this is actually tagged Keith Haring I know that his estate does license out some of the artwork so I'm not quite sure what this will get but it was if nothing else a great opportunity to talk about one of my favorite artists and um, 
you know, maybe one of you have never heard of him, and now you have. And uh, for that, I am happy. Ooh, I can miss you talking about him. I'm sorry. <laughs> Next up, now this is one of my favorite brands to find, and I don't find it all that often, but that is Frame. Now I have yet to pay, find a pair of Frame jeans in the bins. I have found a couple sweaters, I have found a couple tops, but never jeans, and still have not found jeans. These are a very cool pair of like wide leg, I want to call these chinos, but do you see the weave? It's kind of got like a herringbone weave on that fabric. It's really nice. It's got a nice drape to it. And these are just kind of classic chino style cut. This is a size 26. So I think that's about like a size, I think 26 is a size six, but these look a little generously sized to be a size six. So I'll get measurements on there, but a great find. These were probably close to two, $300 when they were new. So probably 40 to 50, maybe a little bit more. I've not done really any comping of this kind of style. I've never actually seen this kind of style from frame, but I will before I lift, list it, of course. But definitely like frame is just an always buy label for me. <laughs> like if I see it, I'm gonna buy it especially if I see it in the bins. Next up, now this was another brand I've never found before in the bins and I grabbed it and I didn't comp it. And I probably should have, but it turned out okay. But I remember seeing this in like a GQ or something like that. This is a company called Roan and they make, you know, they're known for making like active wear, but this is one of those kind of trickster shirts where it looks like a button down kind of work shirt, but it has like the stretch of an athletic wear. And I'm sure this is like a technical fabric. And these have like fellow sold comps in like the 50, $60 range. Uh, Roan is a pretty expensive brand. So definitely be on the lookout for it. Again, I, I never even knew that they made something like this. I just grabbed the, saw the label and I grabbed it. So again, this is one of those ones that I will try to report back when it does sell and let you know like what it did end up selling for because this is something that's like very novel to me. But yeah, for sure, keep your eyes out on that brand. If you've ever found it before, let me know. Let me know how you did with it. Always interested to hear. I can only do so much when comping. So if you have personal experience, let a girl know. Let all of us know. So next up, I found this and I this felt like silk when I initially felt it. And it's this cute little halter top. So it's kind of hard to show like when it's not on a body. So anyway, this goes around the neck and then it's got like a little like bow here right in the middle. Kind of gives it a little bit of like an ascot look. And then it's open back with a ruffle on the bottom. But this is from, I'm almost positive, that is Adriano Goldschmied. There you go. But this is Adriano Goldschmied, who is known for his jeans. The jeans sell for a good clip, um, especially if you find something in like a newer cut. Not quite as good as like a Goldie or Mother or anything like that. But yeah, so I'm interested to see how this will do. I mean, I'm probably 20 to 30 on this. I don't know. It is really cute. It is glam, but this is definitely like a going out shirt. This is not like a good solid basic. So this one might be a lesson learned piece, but again, I'll try to report back when, when this does sell. Cute little piece though. We're getting down to it. I think we only have about two pieces left now. Uh, thank you for all of your responses <laughs> about this on my ship with me video the other day. Uh, a 511 tactical. Am I saying this right now? Am I saying it right now? <laughs> and now I know that I need to tag this. So I'm passing on the information. This is not information that I have. This is information from you that I'm passing back to you. So 511 tactical is known for their pieces that they make for like first responders. And I initially thought that it was used a lot for like hunters, which I'm sure it is, you know, like I'm sure people who hunt and need kind of no nonsense garments would go for something like this, just like they would go for a Carhartt. But I guess they're most known for doing like first responder uniforms, which as we know, they cannot have clothing failures on the job when they are saving lives. So, I'm, I guess these are the best. So when you are selling these, as I have learned from you, you wanna make sure that you're using the tag workwear and that should get it sold pretty quickly. A lot of you said that you've never had a 511 piece. And again, thank you for telling me how to say this. A lot of you were saying that they, you've never had a 511 piece sit for more than like a week. So I'm excited to get these listed and list them with the workwear tag. But uh, yeah, definitely a brand to be on the lookout for. A little bit of a wear here where the like zipper sits underneath the, um, you know, the little welt and, but other than that, these are in great, great condition and they're gray. The other pair that I had were like a longer length and brown. So hopefully these move pretty quick. 
and uh, I'm excited to see how they do, but uh, really, guys, uh, thank you for helping me out. We all learn from each other. Perfect example. Next up, and this is the other like non-clothing piece that I found. We're clearly at the bottom of the bag. These are a pair of suede like lace-up booties from Jeffrey Campbell. And Jeffrey Campbell's a super expensive brand logo, but these are all leather. They're really beautifully made. I've had a couple pair of Jeffrey Campbell boots, like just my own, um, and I really love them. These are a size, I think, seven. So a good size, the right time for something like this. I just think they're really cute. They kind of give me like Freebird vibes. I feel like I've seen a pair of Freebird that look like this. They got a little zip back. I'm not quite sure what they'll go for. I've sold a couple of pairs, like my own pairs. I've sold a couple and they've gone, one pair went for like 150, one pair went for 60, but either way, like these retail for close to two, $300. So you'll still probably get over 40 bucks for a pair of these if you find them for the right price. Definitely a brand to pick up. And finally, this is the last piece here. I've picked this up because it just, felt really well made. It's got like, I don't even know how to describe this. These sequins look like stones. Let me get you up close to that. They look like they're made of granite or like shell or something. Like each sequin has like a unique kind of speckle to it, but it's like, like a taupey gray and clear, but it's really like heavily sequined. Like the weight of this, like you can, you kind of hear that. <clears throat> so the tag had been cut out but I grabbed this just because again, like gut, it felt really nice. And I looked up the RN number. The RN number came up MLV for Marin Lee Vinay. And I'd still never heard of them. It also has like a checked by hand signed thing, which usually is a signature of like, a, you know, some decent quality. So it turns out this is a pretty expensive brand. I'm not really sure where it was sold. I want to say, like when I looked it up, I want to say it was like kind of the Saks level type place, but this is really pretty. This is like a size small. Sequin t-shirts do really well for me. This is just kind of like an easy way to glam up an outfit without, you know, plunging cleavage or something like this. You can throw this on with a pair of jeans and like immediately elevate it. So I'm not quite sure what I'll get for it. Probably somewhere in the $40 range, maybe a little bit more. I'll have to do a little bit more research on who this designer is and where they're sold and kind of how the resale for it goes. But I just thought that this was so unique and so pretty. Oh my God, I'm like noticing this now. I'm just noticing it now. Like, look at the, look at this like interesting side vent here. Look at how that's done. You can see the contour of the sequins around it. So details are there. This is definitely high end. I can't imagine this being a cheap piece to make. So I would imagine that this was a very expensive piece to buy. So a good find and a new brand I'll do a little bit of research about. Um, I can't wait to see. This is another one that I'll be sure to put in a ship with me so I can report back on how this does, um, you know, and let you know if this is a brand to be on the lookout for or not. I'm gonna guess it is. But yeah, beautiful and in perfect condition. But that is it guys, that is the haul for today. Again, a kind of a smaller haul at 32 pieces, but I think some like really interesting, great pieces, definitely some new brands to be on the lookout for. I, I swear, I never come out of the bins without having at least one new brand that I've learned something about. But for all you numbers nerds out there, this is, again, there's 32 pieces, so I put in $32, and the retail value on all of this is somewhere in the vicinity of $4,500, which is just like unbelievable. It will never, I will never not be surprised by that. But I think I have about $900 to $1,000 worth of sales here, uh, which will bring my profit to about $800 or so. And with $32 investment that brings my ROI to an incredible just north of 25x, which is insane. It's just insane. But guys, without further ado, I am really about to lose sunlight like in the next five minutes. So have the most amazing week. Happy hunting and I will see you in the next one.